Well, thank you very much, Andres, and thank you for the opportunity uh, to come before this terrific group and to talk about two entities uh, about which I care a great deal and about which I have, with, with each of which I have a long history. The first is NDN. I've been on the advisory board at NDN for almost 10 years. Uh, it is one of the most interesting, progressive, thoughtful organizations in Washington at understanding where the next set of, of politics and policies will go. Uh, Simon Rosenberg, the head of NDN, is a leader on, on internet communications, on the net routes, saw the potential of that in politics long before anybody else did. He's also been a leader on the issue of Hispanic politics, understanding that for Democrats, the Hispanic vote, Hispanic issues were going to be key. Reaching out to that community, understanding that community, drawing that community in was going to be essential to a successful politics in the United States. And he has helped uh, many people on the progressive side put together the tools for understanding how Hispanic issues can be woven in to politics overall. This program, focusing on Latin America, is a key part of that program. And I've been particularly proud uh, to see how NDN has implemented, the, has implemented this program and the ambassadors, the meetings with Hill leaders who focus on Latin America as a way to help us, frankly, integrate Latin American policy with Hispanic politics into a whole which can help link us more closely together with our neighbors to the south. So I'm here both because I'm proud to be a member of NDN. Uh, I'm also here because I have a long personal history with Colombia, a country I love. Uh, when I was five weeks old, my parents moved to Cali, Colombia. I spent my early formative years living there. My brother was born in Cali. Uh, I am afraid I no longer speak the perfect Spanish that they tried to teach me back then, which Colombians have. But Colombia still has a place close to my heart. Uh, for those of us who have watched Colombia over the last 40 years, uh, it's been remarkable to see the struggles which Colombia has faced, the challenges it has had to overcome because of the dual tyrannies of, of the guerrilla movements on the left, the narco-trafficking, the paramilitaries which rose up on the right. Uh, I was there at the birth of Plan Colombia in the, in the Clinton years, was very proud of the relationship that we began to forge with Colombia at that time just over 10 years ago, and have been very proud to see the, the steady progress that Colombia has made in dealing with narco-trafficking, in dealing with narcotics issues, and dealing with the guerrilla, uh, the guerrilla movement. On a more personal basis, more recently, uh, my firm was deeply involved in the dramatic and historic rescue, rescue of the hostages three weeks ago. Uh, we played a very minor role. We worked with the families and helped them understand what was happening. We liaised with the governments. But the, the actions of the Colombian government there, the, the combination of intelligence, uh, military action, operations, was absolutely stunning and superb. And I'm perfectly convinced it's going to make a fantastic movie someday. Uh, playing a key role in that movie is going to be our guest tonight, our guest this morning, I should say. Uh, Ambassador Barco uh, follows in a long line of, of distinguished polymaths. Uh, the, Colombian, uh, the Colombian government circles tend to turn out the most amazing combinations of intellectuals, politicians, thought leaders, and she comes straight out of that tradition. Her father, Virgilio Barco, was one of the great presidents of Colombia's modern history. Uh, she herself uh, has spent years working in urban planning as a scholar, as an advisor to the United Nations. She served as Colombia's foreign minister for four years from 2002 until 2006, until President Uribe sent her up here to serve him as his, as his ambassador here in Washington in what is perhaps the key relationship for Colombia today as it attempts to forge its uh, new role in the world with a more stable uh, domestic situation. Uh, Ambassador Barco, uh, you've only been in Washington two years next month, 
but it feels to those of us who've been following Columbia as though you've been here at least 10 years, and we'd like to have you be ambassador for life. Let me turn it over to you, ambassador. <laughs> Let us all give us a hand and welcome you back to the back.